Okay, so first prayer player I'm going to give here is Brian Robinson. Uh, it's clear to me that the commanders value Brian Robinson. They've given him at least 15 carries in their last three matches. I was really surprised when I looked at consensus that he's closer to running back 30 projected so far on the week because if you're going to be getting 15 plus touches, I'm going to want you in my lineup. You know, Washington's found themselves in closer game scripts in the last eight matchups. They were all one score games, and I don't expect much to change this week against the Giants in a divisional matchup. Uh, when looking at RB2 options, volume is key. We brought up those 15 touches. It's really hard to look past that. Worst case, you get a copy of week 11 at Houston where Robinson had 15 yards for 57 yards, uh, and he gave you then 5.7 points. That's probably the worst you can get. Albeit disappointing, this is a total that doesn't sink you when you're talking about your RB2 spot. If that is worst case, it's probably worth taking the shot because when he has had at least 15 rushing attempts, which has now been in five games, he's averaged over 12 points per game. 12 points per game would be a mid to high RB2 if you did that over the course of the season. So Robinson, he's, he's outside of that top 24 consensus. And if you need him, he's a, he's a solid fill in my opinion. He's somebody maybe you could pivot to. If you get really nervous about Camaro, you just need that safe, you know, 10 to 12 points. I think Brian Robinson is the guy who can, who can offer you that as your RB2. For year one, I uh, for year one running backs, rookie running backs, not saying these weren't my dynasty ranks, but I thought he was – top three option because of his opportunity because the fact he can operate in the passing game which he actually did get some uh some targets last week which helped contribute to his, contribute to his 20 point he only had three targets two receptions but uh did, did contribute to his 20 point game so i i agree with you i think that his floor is pretty much 12 and if you are able to find him around the goal line a lot more than what they've been doing that was something else I was expecting is that he would have a lot more goal line opportunities, which they just haven't had as many as I was expecting. Uh, the Giants are 16th, so just right in the middle when it comes to fantasy points allowed to the running back. So the, the opportunity is there. We don't know if Daniel Jones is going to turn back into the turnover machine he's been, which could give them a really good field position and a lot more scoring opportunities. If he continues to get more of that passing work, I said that the floor just, just increases. So I actually really like this call this week. Yeah, he's had a couple games where he's gotten, you know, he's had two receptions. I think three or four different times in the season he's had he's had that mark. Um, but with with JW Kissick being out, I mean, it it really makes it a lot safe for me to say Brian Robinson with McKissick in there. I think it was kind of a mess, but when he's out, they've been using Gibson more in that receiving role, which makes a lot of sense to me. Brian Robinson profiled to be more of a bruiser, just a big body. I do think he's just more of a plotter. He's a guy who can handle all these touches, which Washington's made it very clear they want to run the ball. He's the guy to do that for them. And even if, and if Antonio Gibson does eat into a little bit of the rushing attempts, that probably means he gets used a little more in the receiving game. I think it's a give and take. I think both could potentially be viable, but Brian Robinson for me is just the safer option. Uh, I showed that last week against Atlanta, even though against Houston, you know, Gibson had the better day. I think they're I both like this. I think they're both okay, but Brian Robinson's yeah. the guy for me. I like that because if you look back even against Houston, Brian Robinson had 15 attempts and Gibson had 18. So they, they're both incorporated and neither one is going anywhere. So you can feel pretty confident that they're they're going to get work and it's going to be consistent work because that's how they plan on winning with Taylor Heineke. Yeah, they're certainly not you know, beating the ball downfield. I mean, the rise of both these running backs and these running backs both being incorporated and Taylor Heineke being being back there, a quarterback, has been basically the death of Curtis Samuel. And Jahan Dotson doesn't seem like he's going to be a thing this year as a rookie. Um, so, Brian Robinson, he's probably going to be viable. Oh, If he, if have... he does well in 13, he gets the Giants again in Week 15. So, something to keep an eye on. One more thing on the Giants is they're allowing a lot more rush yards per attempt as well. But in comparison to the rest of the league, when it comes to their 23 in 23rd allowed rush yards and 16th in attempts. So they're allowing more, more rush yards on average. So the more rushes he gets, the better. There we go.